Hello, viewers! Yes, it's that time of the week again. It's time for Railways of the West Midlands. On today's documentary, our fellow cameraman and host, Bolton Barkington, takes a visit to the Appy Valley Railway, situated between Bridget Horn and Tidderminster. We uncover the secrets behind the railway's thriving coal industry and meet some of the fellows running the railway today. I don't like your peaches, they are full of stones. I like bananas because they have no bones. Very charming. The year is 1960, and the Abbey Valley Railway turns 80 this coming June. Although if you want to know what controller Mr. Cardio has planned to celebrate it, he says, to put it bluntly, get down for yourselves, you lazy sots. Don't delay, don't fuss, don't bury your granddad. It's time for Railways of the West Midlands. Hiya, Bunker. Good morning. Cracking weather, isn't it? I know. You'd almost think it wasn't Britain. Did you know this railway's going to be 80 years old this weekend? Yes, I did. I've had passengers riding on me as old as that. Some of them even older. That's pretty crazy, right? You're a cheeky sod. You know that, right? To think tomorrow it'll be 80 years since the Appy Valley Railway opened fully for the first time. We'd better find it a walking cane. Boston, you make about as much sense as damp ink. I've heard that Mr. Carlyer is planning something really special for it, but I don't know what. Has he told you lot yet? No, Joanna. Not a peep. Personally, I put my bets on him showing us an open tin of beans from the 1800s. With how dangerous building this line was for the navvies, I dare say there'd be quite a few. The Bridget Hornbean Can Society will be very impressed. Hey, Crawley, what the? What was that? Hello, Crawley. Uh, who have you got there? Jerome, aka Old Groner. Mind you, I've pulled heavier things than him. I've pulled many heavy coal trains, as you know, because I'm a I'm a mine engine. You you know that already. Well, I've uh, I, I I've pulled uh, cement wagons, but you didn't know I pulled cement wagons. I'm being awkward. I'm going to go and get some water. I I'll I'll chat to you later. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I'll just go go and. Crikey! Huh, it's Jerome. I don't believe it, it's been so long. You know this old fogey, Joanna. Personally, I'm very taken by his moustache. I've seen bowling professionals that don't strike nearly as much as... that handsome thing. Jerome is just one of my surprises. When my father used to have my position, Jerome ran the railway single-handedly. He's the last of his kind left. Quite the celebrity back then, wasn't he? Even the men can't get enough of him. When was this photo taken, Mr. Cardio? 1900. I asked for Jerome to be brought here again for Bridget Horn's 80th anniversary. He'll be on display here for the weekend. I'll leave him to sleep for now, get along with him, and uh, be considerate and respectful. He is an antique after all. I can't believe it. 
my predecessor standing right next to me and he's a pannier tank just like me I'm at a loss for words you can't be Boston you've just spoken very true Barry very true I wonder what Mr. Cardio's other surprises. Uh, um, what's happening? Where am I? Bridget Horn? It can't be. Jonah? No. No. My old friend Jonah! What a surprise! And who are you two? I'm Boston, and this is my friend Barry. Our controller was just telling us about you. Pleased to make your acquaintance, Jerome. Oh, make your acquaintance? Well, what a smart young engine you are. Don't get your hopes up. Roll up, ladies and gentlemen, and see the antique steam engine. And also, please, ride on the train. An open-topped tank engine just shows you how far engines have come. To think once upon a time steam engines were just beer barrels on wheels, but without the beer. I find it strange he doesn't mind being gaped and gawked at. I know I would. Mind you, it's a bit of a downgrade. The current station pilot doesn't have a fancy- You're gonna say moustache, aren't you, Barry? <laughs> oh no, 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 not jealous, are you, Boston? No, I just knew what you were going to say, that's all. You must be getting old and wise like Jerome. Pity about the moustache, though. <laughs> we haven't seen you since the end of the war, Jerome. How have you been since then? Having a well-earned rest, I presume. Can't say I blame you. Bunker, please forgive me. What year is this? 1960, and it's okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll be honest, I keep forgetting things half the time. Oh well, I'm old, I'm allowed. Oh, I hated the war. I was never good at pulling those evacuee trains. Oh, and those blackouts. Oh, alright, alright, let's not have politics about it. Have a politics about it? Huh? I remember, Jonah. You always had trouble with those passenger trains. He used to joke that if your, your supervisor didn't stop stopping to blow you up, the bombs would do it for you. Hey, I did my fair share of work. Oh, by the way, what does have a politics mean? Oh, it just means that I don't want an argument. But I wasn't arguing. Do, do you know what? Never mind. What a swiss, Dad! That engine's broken! <laughs> broken? I'm retired, actually. Oh, Jerome, don't have a politics about it, eh? Yes, son, you heard him. He's retired. Retired? <laughs> it might be you in that spot someday, Boston. What, as a museum piece, Supervisor? Yeah. Mind you, I think that Crawley would make a good museum piece. Every time he tells a story, you could pay him a fair bit of bob to get him working again. <laughs> Just like an old dog, Boston. Every engine has its day. Yeah, you don't say. You three are quite eclectic. I still can't believe it takes three engines to do now what it only took one engine to do back then. Well, that is progress for you, Jerome. It must have been boring no one to talk to engine to engine. Before Bunker and Joanna came along anyway. Oh, I never gave it much fuss. I was friends with all the passengers, staff, and there was always someone to talk to at the junction. Pardon if this sounds rude, Jerome, but uh, do you feel old, or is age just a number to you? You could feel old at any age, Barry. Sometimes I feel old. Well, I think the only time I've ever felt old was by spending years in the back corner of a shed. But I tell you this today made me feel like a young engine again, I think. Day one of the anniversary weekend has gone splendidly. Jerome, congratulations for today. You really rekindled old memories for some. Now, Boston, Barry and Bunker, 
Here is my plan for tomorrow. You three will take part in a celebratory cavalcade. Bunker will lead. Barry in the middle. Boston at the back. So that's your second surprise, eh, sir? That sounds wicked. An anniversary triple header. Oh, but is Joanna taking part too, sir? I'm sorry, Boston. I'm afraid not. All four of you together would exceed the weight limit. But I would like you and your supervisors to make sure you're all spick and span for six o'clock. The train leaves at nine. How thoughtful of Mr. Cardio to place me at the front. He knows I like having a clear view. <laughs> Takes after his dad. Always puts his engines first. It sounds lovely. I hope it goes well for you. Ah, <sighs> I wish Joanna could take part. Stupid weight restrictions. What's a celebratory cavalcade without the engine who pulls the coal trains? Without her, no coal in the fireboxes and no railway. I don't think anything can be done about it, Boston. Better to be safe than sorry. Mr. Guardio can only do what he can do. Hmm, she's not really part of the Appy Valley Railway, is she? That's what the celebrations are for. She belongs to the mine company. Uh, she is part of the railway? She pulls trains along the line like we do. What's your point, Barry? Boston, I was only making an observation. By Jove, you really are jealous over Jerome's moustache. Don't make me come over there. You see that? Trains are so heavy, they need free engines nowadays. Careful, Boston, you just gave me a slight bump. Whoops. Sorry, Barry. Everything alright back there? Not only is Boston jealous of Jerome's moustache, I think he's jealous of your headboard bunker. <laughs> what did the toupee say to the sideburns, Boston? Sorry, moustache. Jerome might have a classy moustache, but at least I can still run. Oh! Oh, heck! What's that? You can still run, Boston. <laughs> Not likely. What's wrong with Boston? There's nothing wrong with Barry, I just checked. Boston's failed. Oh, that's terribly specific, isn't it? I'll tell the passengers we might be standing here for a while. And you can tell the signalman too. Oh, dear. And this is the anniversary train too. Keep looking Boston over. The problem has to be there somewhere. At least we didn't break down inside the tunnel. Then I would have really lost my rag. Some celebratory cavalcade this has turned out to be. I hope there's a simple fix to your problem, Boston. Oh, there'll be a light at the end of the tunnel, I'm sure. Oh, I, I can't see one. We apologise to announce that there is a delay with the train from Bridget Orne. Thank you for your cooperation and for travelling with British Railways. What do you reckon, Crawley? First carriage pipe? Taking passengers in the brake van? Last minute landslide? Uh, wrong sort of snow? I don't know. Why are you asking me? Why are you asking me? Oh, not that old chestnut. I wouldn't be surprised if it's actually snowed knowing the stuff that happens on that line. Look, Barry, I've got to be honest. In a roundabout sense, you were right. I have been letting Jerome get to my head. Do we elaborate, Boston? Seeing Jerome has just made me feel a bit anxious, that's all. When I look at him, I feel like that'll be me at some point. Useless, like a museum piece. One day it'll happen. 
It just scares me. I wanted to tell you last night, but I didn't think I could. And not in front of Jerome in any case. You are daft, Boston. Have I got this right? You're worried that one day your time will run out? Yes. Well, don't be. It's not really something you should worry about. Savour this moment, but let me tell you something. Not a single thing in life lasts forever. However, that doesn't mean nothing lasts at all. What I'm really saying is, live in the present for heaven's sakes. What was the part we had to save her, Barry? Me spouting life advice. Right, we've found the problem. Boston sniffed her valve gasket has cracked. I think it's probably because you're not used to being pulled by two other engines, are you, Boston? A cracked valve, SV? I'll be honest, I was expecting something with a bit more oomph. It's fixable, but we can't do much now. We could get the train to the junction and take you off there. We've come all this way and I don't get to finish the train with my own friends? Has this railway not survived 80 years for engines to just give up like that? It's a poxy valve. Look at me, I've got several others. For crying out loud, you'll have me in tears. Boston has got a point. Our last station's only a few miles away. If Boston doesn't push himself too hard, he can get to the station. Barry and Bunker are still in good condition. That is two to one. All right, everyone back to their position. Good old Boston. Not giving up when the chips are down. Mind you, if my chips ever fall down, I'd just ask the bloke for a refund. I hope you didn't actually listen to that rubbish pep talk. Oh, I did. Thanks, Barry. You burke of little brain. I mean... You're welcome, Boston. An hour late. Huh. Good for nothing layabouts. Eh? Apparently not. Uh, there is one small problem. You have derailed in front of my train. Could you have not done that? And he said, well, no, because I, 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 I'm right here. Derailed. <gasps> Crawley, here they come! What was it this time? Let me guess. Was the signalman sniffing glue or something? Boston had a cracked valve. Pah! Cracked valve? Might as well be telling me the dog chewed your homework. We all still brought the train home, Otto. Yes, I have excellent eyes, you know. But it's just very coincidental that it happens to this very special train, eh? Or was it not that special at all? Clearly you don't care about your own heritage. Perhaps you've got a point, Barry. Boston really is a liability, isn't he? Oh, oh shut, shut up, Otto. Otto! I can see it now. This'll be the talk of the sheds, you know. Get Boston binned. That's what we'll be saying. Talk all you like. See if we care. Hello. How are you feeling now, Boston? I feel fine, Bunker. Never been better. All they did was replace a valve. Well, sometimes it's the little things that make a huge difference. Yes, like a freshly painted signpost. Or something like that. In spite of the incident, I think the 80th anniversary went very well. Oh yes, sir. Jerome's moustache made all the difference. It's been so remarkable to see Bridget Horn again. I think it's changed for the better, I'd say. Thank you for letting me come back, Mr. Cardio. Hopefully by the time the 90th anniversary rolls around, I won't just be falling asleep half the time. And having a politics the other half? Having a having a politics? Oh, that's clever. I like that scene. <laughs> Jerome, before you go, how did you grow that moustache? What can I say? Some engines have hair, some don't, and some don't really want to cut it. 
Bad luck, Boston. You could have grown a moustache so long you and Joanna could have done a gender-swapped Rapunzel. Who needs a moustache when you've got my, um... Uh... When you've got my... Earnestness, Boston? I think that fits the bill. Come on, you old buffalo, let's get you home. I've got a name, you know. You know, it was my father's fondness for Jerome that led to me bringing Boston to the railway in the first place. Sir, are you basically saying Boston's your favourite? Absolutely not. In a family of engines, you don't have favourites. And Boston, you made me proud yesterday. I think you've lived up to the Appy Valley spirit most admirably. Well, failed or not, it wouldn't have been right not to finish the job. I dare say you've come quite a way since those early days too. As have all of you, I'm sure. Boston, you were quite wrong about old age. Jerome was entertaining a lot of people this weekend, and he wasn't going anywhere or doing anything. I suppose it doesn't matter what condition you're in, you can still make an impact. Even those who are long gone still have an effect on us. Yeah, I do believe they're called ghosts. <laughs> you are a plonker, Boston. Thank you for watching. Cheerio!